Every week, we're taking a closer look at a weather topic, a deeper dive than what we can usually do within our daily weathercasts on KPIX. Since we just saw the unofficial end of summer with Labor Day weekend, I want to take a look back at meteorological summer. That's June, July, and August. Summer 2021 was definitely a summer of the extremes, as floods and fires, drought, intense heat, and powerful storms ripped across the U.S. and the globe. Let's start with the heat, and it seems obvious to point out, but I want to be clear, intense and record-breaking heat like we saw this summer is a direct result of climate change. By pumping heat-trapping greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, we're raising temperatures at the Earth's surface. In a stable climate, we would expect record highs and lows to be relatively balanced over a long period of time. But in a warming climate, we're seeing more record highs being broken. It's true across the country and also locally in San Francisco. Record warm temperatures are being set at a rate that far outpaces record cold temperatures. And it's the same story for San Jose over the past several decades. This summer in late June, the Pacific Northwest had a heat wave that shattered all time record highs by large margins. More than 200 people died as a result of the heat and thousands visited emergency rooms with heat-related illnesses, and thousands more were forced to head to cooling centers to try to beat the heat since so many homes in the Pacific Northwest don't have air conditioning. Our partners at Climate Central conducted their own analysis on local heat records for this summer and over the past couple of decades, and the numbers are startling. Of the 1,396 cities they analyzed, summer 2021 ranked in the top 10 hottest summers on record for a whopping 38%. That's three out of eight and 114 cities recorded the hottest summer on record. Look at all those orange dots in the western U.S. Summer 2021 was also the hottest on record for huge portions of California, Oregon, Washington, Nevada, Idaho, and Utah. Just this week, Fresno broke its all-time record for the most 100-degree high temperatures in a single year. Summer 2021 was not only about the heat, though. The summer of the western U.S. has had persistent, severe drought conditions, while some areas east of the Mississippi were overwhelmed with flooding. This is also a pattern we expect because of climate change. In a warming climate, the atmosphere can hold more moisture, essentially supercharging the water cycle. So we see more intense evaporation in some areas and heavy precipitation in others. As of September 2nd, 95% of the western U.S. is in some sort of drought, at least moderate drought conditions, according to the U.S. Drought Monitor. Almost half of California is in exceptional drought, the worst category. This summer, Lake Mead, the country's largest reservoir, reached its lowest water level since it was initially filled in the 1930s. Lake Oroville has also reached critical water levels, forcing its hydroelectric plant to shut down for the first time. On the flip side, Detroit, Michigan had significant water damage to schools, homes and businesses after heavy rainfall flooded the metro area back in June. In August, up to 17 inches of rain, a foot and a half, caused major flash flooding and damage in Humphreys County, Tennessee, resulting in at least 20 deaths. And just last week, the remnants of Hurricane Ida caused catastrophic flooding in the Northeast after the hurricane itself pummeled the Gulf Coast of Louisiana as one of the three strongest hurricanes to make landfall there. But flood events are also happening across the globe. In Germany and Nigeria, heavy persistent rainfall caused unprecedented flooding that resulted in property damage, injuries, and a number of fatalities. Finally, there's this year's very active wildfire season. Climate change increases the risk of larger, more intense wildfires, and we've certainly seen that in action over the past few months and years. Fire weather, which is defined by warmer temperatures, drier conditions, and wind, allows fires to spread faster and farther, leaving devastation in their wake. Those fire weather days are increasing across large sections of the western U.S. Large fires across the west began in July, straining firefighting resources even earlier this summer, including in California. We've, of course, been focused on the fires burning here in California and the impacts on our air quality, but 11 different states are reporting large fires, and there are almost 100 separate large fires burning around 2.4 million acres of land. Unfortunately, 2021's summer of the extremes is the type of season we're going to see more and more frequently. The more we emit greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, the more extreme weather events that we're going to face in the future. Longer droughts, larger fires, more intense floods, and dangerous heat waves. Now, I hate to leave you on a down note, but good news has been kind of hard to come by in the weather department this summer. So that's it for this week's Weather Extra. Meteorologist Darren Peck will be back next, next week to cover another topic, and we are inviting you to play a role. If you have a weather or climate question, you can email it to us at weatherextra at kpix.cbs.com.